In this video, I'm going to take a look at black and white image processing and the different styles you can use to create beautiful and eye-catching images. Black and white processing definitely adds an extra dimension to one's enjoyment of photography. You can take an average or even poor color composition and transform it into something quite striking and special. You can give images a modern look with a high definition dynamic style and a lot of structured details. Or you can produce a more classical, silky, cinematic look harking back to classic Hollywood days. Not necessarily the sharpest looking images, but they can have a lovely, smooth, glossy effect. You can make more grainy, vintage images with blemishes and faded areas and a more grainy texture in different monotones, not just pure black and white tones. And there are other creative ways to process black and white images, for example by adding vignettes to produce really striking high-key or low-key results. As well as these artistic and creative possibilities, I think it's a well-known fact amongst vintage lens users that black and white processing is an excellent way to resolve some of the inherent weaknesses of old lenses and modern lenses, come to think of it. You can hide color fringing issues, as I've done here. And you can really seriously transform images from old lenses that produce low contrasts and weak colors or new lenses where you've taken a good composition but messed up the exposure settings. In the rest of this video, I'll show you how you can produce all these different styles and more using my favorite black and white software tool, Nick's Silver FX application. Now it's easy to convert a color image into a black and white image using the simplest of software on your computer or even on your mobile phone. It's a one button conversion and then you can play around with the lighting and contrast, for instance. However, this approach is rather limited, and the reason I like Nick's Silver FX software is that it helps you to quickly apply more interesting filters to your images, and then further adjust the results if you want to. I've been a long-term and very happy user of the Nick collection as a standalone software package. You don't need to buy Adobe Photoshop, for example, to use it. Some of us started with the free copy of Nick many years ago, but the current iteration is a really significant and impressive upgrade on those early versions. Indeed, quite a daunting array of presets, controls, and sliders. I've included an affiliate link to the software in the description below. The Nick collection is on DxO's website, so if you're interested in a free trial or buying the software, then you'll be helping my channel if you use this link. However, I'd like to stress I'm not being paid up front to produce this video or sell the software. It's always been my intention on this channel to cover aspects of post-processing software alongside lens reviews partly because it's such an integral part of finishing off images before showing them to others, partly because I am, and I think many of my subscribers are also, very active users of old lenses, where some images really do look much better in black and white, and partly because I've learnt a lot of lessons from using software that I'd like to share with you. I posted a video last year on the Nick Collection's Color FX, demonstrating in particular how you can extract the finer details from an image, such as accentuating swirls, tools that are especially useful if you're into buying lenses for their more eccentric bouquet. Today I'm going to focus on Silver FX, but I'm also going to demonstrate some interesting effects you can create using Analog FX, another part of the Nick Collection. Now, three of the styles I've been talking about are built into the Silver FX software, modern, classic, and vintage. The software also has preset styles called En Vogue and 25th Anniversary, which I'll briefly cover as well. And I'll show you how to create other eye-catching black and white images in both Silver FX and Analog FX. So let's start with a modern style for black and white images. I'll be using this image initially for the demonstration. I'll quickly click through each of the filters they're mostly going to give you strong contrast and strong structured processing effects, i.e. accentuating the details in your images, creating a high dynamic look. Depending on the composition, I find the full dynamic harsh filter a little too harsh for my needs. So my go-to filter tends to be full dynamic smooth. Here's a comparison between the earlier free software and the current version. There have been a whole host of additions to the menu. The new software really has a completely different level of sophistication and usefulness. Most of the sliders and options are self-explanatory. You'll have fun playing with them yourself, so I won't go through each one. For this particular image, it needs adjustment to the light and dark contrasts. These brightness sliders are the ones to use. You can add more contrast or bring out the details by adding more structure. 
You can adjust the tone of the image down here. I rather like adding blue or cyan tints to black and white images. You can add a dark or light vignette to the image. I'm quite keen on adding a small amount of vignette to images to give the center of the image more of a pop, although for this image, it can make the road look a little too dark. And you can add a border. Changing the design to suit your preferred style of border. After you've made the changes, you can save your own preset if you want to. Personally, I don't save many presets because I approach each image with a fresh start, but I do know some people do like to use their own presets. Looking through the other modern filters, I also like wet rocks. If you want to show more dramatic skies and cloud contrasts, then this is a good one to use. Not surprisingly, wet rocks works especially well for images taken in or after the rain. Using this image, for example, it's an image where adding some structure can help to bring out the raindrops on the beetle. Finally, for this modern style is the Silhouette filter, which can help you to produce, together with tinkering in Photoshop as well, some quite striking black and white images. Now onto the classic styles. These filters will primarily help you to produce an elegant, glossy look to your images. With this image, it really doesn't need a more dynamic, structured, modern style processing. It's dynamic enough. But the very dynamic nature of the contrast is very well suited to a smooth, glossy, black and white makeover. Here are the classic options. I want to keep the strictly private lettering in view, not blacked out. So the best option is a filter called High Key 1. From now on in this video, I'm not going to show you all the detailed moves with the sliders and controls. We'll be here all night. But for the record, I've done some tinkering with brightness and contrast. And most notably, I've applied a vignette called Lens Fall Off 3 to darken the left-hand side of the image. As I mentioned at the beginning, the classic filters are also good for creating a smooth, old classic Hollywood style of black and white portrait. For this demonstration, I'm going to take a photo of our cat. She's quite a diva, with gorgeous blue eyes. I love her in colour, but the background red carpet is quite distracting, and this photo can look good in black and white too, with a different kind of pop. For portraits, I tend to start with the neutral filter, nothing too radical, and then play with the sliders. My objective here is to isolate the cat's face and ruff against a darker background. So I've played with the highlights, mid-tone, shadows and soft contrast, and I've reduced the structure, as I want a slightly softer look. And I've finished it off with a white border. I think this is a pretty classic diva-like result. Next is the vintage look, and by vintage I mean images that have more imperfections than the modern or classic styles. Images with blemishes, or fades, or tints, or obvious vignetting. Within this broader category, there are a wide variety of different styles you can try. I'll be using this photo of the cloisters at Durham Cathedral. The majority of the vintage presets add frames to the image, which can work very effectively, but you can turn off the borders if you want. And as for all these filters, it really depends on the kind of effect you're trying to produce. With this image, I think it looks best with the left-hand side in darkness. I'm not so keen on showing all those chairs and benches. The pinhole filter works especially well here, darkening the edges, and also giving a grainy look to the whole image. Using the compare slider at the top, you can see the quite dramatic change between the neutral black and white processing and the pinhole processing. One of my favourite vintage filters is the Cool Tones. There's something very elegant about the results, and I like the preset border. I often find I don't need to do much adjustment to the initial Cool Tones processing, which is helpful. However, with this particular image, the adjustments in brightness and whites really made a big difference. It wouldn't be right to have a demonstration of vintage processing without including sepia tones, or more accurately, yellowed silvered tones. I personally don't find the sepia presets very convincing for an old yellowed look, 
but you can create your own vintage tones in the expanded toning sliders and then add some lighter vignetting as I've done with this image. Oh yes, and I've also applied some film grain from this part of the menu to add to the vintage effect. It's fun to play with the filters in the vintage preset in Silver FX, but if you want an even more radical approach to vintage processing, then you can use the Nick Collections Analog FX application. Analog FX has a whole load of interesting presets that you can use with black and white images to create all kinds of different vintage looks. Taking this image, I'll quickly show you some of the presets and filters you can apply. It's just a cross selection of ones I've enjoyed trying. There really are far too many to cover in this video. Now back to Silver FX's presets and the En Vogue series of filters produce a variety of different effects, mostly designed to give a darker, moodier look to images. This colour image is rather nice in terms of the composition, but it lacks a real punch because of the washed out colours. It was taken with an ancient Auto Takuma 55F 2.2 lens, a lens that doesn't produce strong contrast in this kind of light so it's ripe for a black and white makeover with the darker filters in En Vogue. I'll go through the filters. Some are designed to give images more pop and deeper contrasts, while others are more dreamy and grainy. For this particular image, I'd go for the Intense Contrast Effect filter because it helps focus on the person walking in the distance and accentuates the light streaming in through the trees. Finally, from this list of presets, there are the 25th Anniversary filters. Some of these filters are very nice. I like the classic Portrait Cool Tones filter. It's quite subtle and the tones are good. And of course, you can change those tones if you want to. A word of warning though, some of the filters are quite ruthless on portraits, such as this so-called Hollywood glamour one. I don't think my wife would find this very glamorous. It's best avoided if you want to remain friends or married to your subjects. So it's really a question of searching through the filters and finding out which ones you like the look of for a specific image. So I've covered the presets in Silver FX and some creative ideas for moving the sliders, such as toning, vignetting and borders, plus a few of the ways you can process black and white images using analog FX. There's one other creative approach I'd like to show you, and that involves low-key and high-key processing. I think low-key and high-key processing can be one of the most interesting effects for black and white images. I'll start with low-key and this image, an image I've had a lot of fun processing. I've already demonstrated low-key vignetting with this image on other videos, but I think it's worth briefly revisiting it here. It's a mock-up of a moonshot, a small plastic figure standing on a pile of cooking flour, photographed with a macro lens under kitchen lights. Not a great colour result. And it's not a very contrasty image, so the first thing to do is to convert it into black and white using the full dynamic smooth filter in the modern presets. I don't want to use the full dynamic harsh filter as it brings out too much of the background. But I do want to have some more details on the figure, so I've added some more structure, while at the same time dialing down the shadows. Darkening the shadows accentuates the curve of the moon's surface. Having done these adjustments, I could save the image and open up color effects to do some vignetting, as I've done in the past with previous Nick versions. But actually, I can now do the vignetting as well in Silver FX. The idea is to give the way the shadows fall across the image even more depth, and you can position the centre of the vignetting at different points to get different looks to the shadows, in the centre, or top and bottom right, and so on. I'm going to place the centre to the left of the astronaut. And that's it. Quite a simple set of changes to transform the original kitchen top photo. 
These sorts of low-key processing techniques can also work well for portraits, street scenes and landscapes. To show just one example, this photo is taken by an old Lights Elmer 5cm f3.5 collapsible lens dating back to the 1930s. The low-key processing, combined with a structure boost to the details, gives it a very strong impact. It's also great to use the Nick Collection software for high-key processing. This is a cute scene if you like cats, but a pretty unpromising colour image, underexposed, lacking in contrast. But it does have a light, uncluttered background that is perfect, pardon the pun, for high-key processing. I'm going to use the high-key 2 filter in the classic presets. Then I played around with the sliders, including the vignette sliders, to produce this final result. I think it's quite a dramatic difference and improvement from the original image. As with low-key processing, you can also use high-key processing to give street scenes and landscape images a more dramatic look. This was taken on a misty morning, misty rather than a dense fog, and I've already lightened the image a little using a neutral black and white filter. Using the vignette slider with the centre positioned at the bottom of the image gives the image an even more foggy and I think more beautiful look without losing the details in the foreground. So there it is. I've walked through some of the many different ways you can process photos into black and white images, ranging from modern and classic styles to vintage styles. And I hope you found the demonstrations interesting and useful. I should point out that the Nick Collection software has also been designed to be used as a plugin for Adobe products, such as Photoshop and Lightroom Classic, so you can do your adjustments to your images from there. As I mentioned at the start, if you're interested in trying the Nick Collection, then I've included a link to DxO's website in the description below. There are, of course, many different ways of processing black and white images in the collection, and it would be good to hear your experiences and ideas, as well as any comments on this video. In the meantime, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. Here is a link to my other video on the Nick Collection if you're interested. And until the next time, all the best.